I made another ship from scratch. This one is even bigger, and most importantly, not just a box with details. Stick around to see my whole process. Like any of my scratch projects, I start with some styrene. You may be wondering why I'm wearing a coat. Well, it's about 8 degrees Celsius in here. Look at this nonsense. Okay, I lied. We're starting with cardstock to pattern the parts before going to styrene. For this project in particular, this was a must. You'll see why in a minute. I start with the wings, which would give me an idea of the overall size of the model. I wanted two sets of wings with roughly the same shape while still being distinct. I end up tweaking the shape of these later, but first I'll figure out the main body of the ship. Let's talk about the design. This 3D printed model is from the Lazy Forger on My Mini Factory, and it's part of a campaign that I supported for a tabletop war game called Full Spectrum Dominance. I'm not being sponsored in any way, and I spent my own money to buy these. The style of the tech army in particular really stood out to me, and I knew I had to get the files and make some of my own. You can still back the campaign with a late pledge until the end of January, or of course just buy the models from his regular page. Right, the idea is to make a larger ship in the same style. So after transferring the patterns to the plastic, I cut them out and started to use this tool. This thing is a game changer. I used it a lot on this project. It's a panel line scorer, and I'll link a similar one by Tamiya in the description. I drilled out some holes and used a countersink bit to smooth the edges. After scoring those lines, I could use my cut transform glue style bending tool to get a nice uniform bend. Additionally, I cut out some more detail on the sides. This is EVA craft foam. I didn't trust the styrene to stay together throughout the whole project, so I glued a strip of EVA foam onto it and reinforced the bends with some super glue and baking soda. This is just to make sure it doesn't snap while I'm working on other parts. I spent some time modeling and printing some details of my own in various sizes. Three of these will do nicely here, uh, but they need something to attach to. So I cut another sheet of plastic to fit the contour and glue in some other sheets to make it rigid and bulky. Alright, remember earlier when I said having patterns would be useful? Well, here's where that comes in. I cut one wing out of 1mm styrene. Then used poster tack to hold it down for its mirrored counterpart. Switching to 0.5mm styrene, I cut out four more of the same shape as well as a full complement of parts for the smaller wings. These sheets will be sandwiched together to make a nice cut out panel detail with the 1mm in the middle to provide stability. And to do that cutout detail, I'll cut the pattern for the wings to make our new pattern, like so. Which, you guessed it, can be traced onto the previous layers. While I make these sandwiches, feel free to hit the subscribe button and like the video if you like what I'm doing here. All the sandwiches are made, but they're not the tastiest looking sandwiches I've seen, so let's change that. I put on a dust mask and got to filing. This was a super time consuming part of the build, but it was definitely worth it. Just look at the difference in how buttery smooth the wing is now. 
Next, it needs some panel lines here. The panel scoring knife eats up the cutting mat, so I had to use a scrap piece of plywood as a cutting board. The knife is going to dig out a groove of plastic, so I have to be careful not to lose my time investment on these sandwiches. Cleaning up the lines with a file and bringing them around the edge means that these babies are done. After seeing how smooth the wings came out, I wanted to fix the edges of the main body with some miniature edge banding. This is just some super thin 0.2mm styrene sheet cut and filed to fit. I next took some 8mm styrene pipe and I chucked it up in my drill. And don't try this at home, but I'm holding everything and pushing the trigger all by hand and turning the details as you would with a mini lathe. Consistency was the challenge, but I got them to a satisfactory point and glued them in place. Next, I added even more angles to the underside and made a bracer for the wings. I needed to add some detail to these blank spots. which came out really cool and is all but hidden in the end. I attached the larger wings to the bottommost section of the body and used some Gundam add-on parts along with some of my own 3D designs as greebles. After I was happy with the main shapes, I went ahead and glued on the propulsion details, some of which I designed and others that I kitbashed from the Lazy Forger's models themselves. This really helps to tie them in with the same style. I finally committed to the three main circle details and stuck them on with some super glue, making sure they were as crooked as possible. And I glued on an upscaled mechanical iris bit that I cut from the Tech Army models to be the robotic eye. The cylinders I turned didn't look right, so I plugged up the holes with some 5mm styrene rod that I rounded over on the ends in the same way. It's ready to prime and paint! I love making models from scratch and I think this is my best work yet. It takes a huge amount of time and I'm grateful to my supporters on Patreon for being so patient with me in what I want to produce. If you want to support the channel too, you can check out that link in the description. I used a Tamiya Oxide Primer rattle can and tested out some panel shading with the airbrush, but then I got stuck. I had no idea what color scheme to go with. I was originally thinking yellow and I even painted up these little models from the game a few times to test out different colors. In the end I decided to go with a light grey, but I wanted to keep the Oxide as an accent color. Luckily, I had this masking goop that dries in about 20 minutes. I masked the cutaway details on all four wings and I taped off the body. After spraying a light grey through the airbrush off camera, I had the pleasure of peeling off the rubbery masking stuff. Some of the metallic details got painted by hand with burnt iron. The top plate needed a bit more... something, so I masked off a couple stripes that terminate in points. I pressed down the edges with a cotton swab and then brushed on some orange. The brush strokes were bothering me, so I dabbed at the paint with a paper towel to give the stripes an intentional texture. The undercarriage and details all got hit with a grey dry brush, followed by just a small amount of orange. And once I was happy with that, I took it all back to the airbrush booth and added some panel shading with a red brown. I'm still an airbrush beginner and there was some sputtering on these shadows, but I couldn't be happier at this stage in the hobby. 
I started to glue all the parts together and took a break to paint in the glowing green iris. I used CA glue to combine all the parts and set it on a simple black stand for now. Once I get the other models painted, I want to make a more diorama style base for them. I want to give a huge shout out as always to all of my Patreon supporters. They are Jimmy G, Andrew Price, Michael Dahiti, Spaghetti a la mode, Harker, Kitsch, Paul Bechtel, and of course my dollar store enablers here. Thank you so much for keeping me building and painting these crazy creations. If you liked this video, check out my channel or click on one of these videos to see some more of what I've created. Go make something, and I'll see you on the next build.